<laughs> yes. <laughs> what a waste of ammo. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of ammo. For your close up, Mr. Deville. <laughs> I'll be filming this. I am. Should I put that at the end of the video? <laughs> yes. For your close up, Mr. Deville? Hey, Brass Facts here. Welcome to another Stock to Stack with my Blosser AK. For those tuning in for the first time, this is a series where I go from a stocked rifle to a fully stacked rifle, as the name implies. This is part two. We're currently at 740 rounds at the time of this video. Last time we went from a mostly bare AK to what you see here. As you can see... <laughs> oh sweet, how do YouTubers do this? As you can see, the optic went from riding on the TWS rail to the Ford, Ford Ultimac rail. I don't know what gen this is, I didn't install this, it came with the rifle. But I have serious reason to believe that this TWS rail does not hold zero basically what i did was well, basically what i did was keep the optic on the rail went up wiggled it back and forth like this reset it and we had serious point of impact shifts so anyway optic is now riding up here i don't really want to test this out review it or whatever i didn't install the rail i can't know for a fact that it's just not installed properly who knows anyway so anyway optic is riding up here while i do prefer the traditional optic back here and i could go with like an rs regulate mount um i don't really want to deal with that right now anyway having it up here is kind of cool i guess i look like a russian escape from tarkov operator with their ultra front heavy setups now so i guess video game street cred as for the hollow sun 43 itself that i bought specifically for this setup so far so good we're looking at about 500 rounds into the testing for it. And this rail gets exceptionally hot, as AK users know. So if it can survive being barbecued on the regular, I have good faith that it's going to survive. Regardless, we'll have a review coming up when I use up the rest of my 762 by 39 and can't get any more because of, you know, COVID. Gun scare. Um, so that'll be around 2,000 rounds when I'll finally have a review for this and run out of ammo. Sling-wise, I'm using a Magpul RLS. I wanted a no-frill sling instead of a uh, fancier adjustable sling, like the VTAC, VCAS, whatever. So I got this. So far, so issues. We'll see if I start missing the adjustability as I shoot this rifle more. The ability to cinch it down, so on and so forth. But this isn't really that kind of rifle, so I don't know if I will. I'll mention this now because, well, someone's going to bring it up. I couldn't really mount a sling attachment point and this flashlight up here there was no space and even when there was when i had the optic back here my thumb couldn't reach the flashlight anymore because of the sling attachment method so i moved it up here and remember i'm a lefty so the sling actually comes out this side i can't just mount directly to this it needs to feed through this side um so yeah it's paracord mounted on here we'll see We'll see if I keep it like this. There's a very good chance this is going to rip out at some point, and this whole rifle is going to slap me in the nuts. So we'll probably swap it out if we ever get a new handguard. Uh, I guess we figured out that AK barrels don't get hot enough to melt paracord, at least at my rate of fires. As for the light, this is just some Surefire I had lying around. I sprayed it when I sprayed the rifle. It's doing, it's doing all right. It's a Surefire light, whatever. All right, on to the future of this rifle. Once my COVID bucks come in, Trump bucks. I don't, I don't really know what we're calling it anymore. I'll probably get a fixed front sight gas block. So this comes off attached to here, basically. And I'll cut the barrel down and attach a dead air muzzle device while shortening it down to 13.7 and obviously pin and welding it. We're doing the front sight block because I have to basically attach a new muzzle device and that requires rethreading. And also because fixed front sight posts are tight. And a new muzzle device, because honestly, as fun as it's being slapped around with the AK recoil, I kind of want to tame it down. And I want to attach a suppressor, well, well, because this is America, right? In all seriousness, I generally don't like muzzle brakes, specifically on tactical and defensive ARs, because of the increased flash signature, massive concussive force in CQB kind of things, like indoors, and the general lack of need for one on an AR. However, I'm finding with the AK that I... I'm trying to shoot it at AR speeds, and I'm missing a lot, as you kind of saw in the video. 
If I slow down just a hair, I obviously make my hits, but after shooting ARs for so long, I kind of internalized a certain tempo I want to go at. So I end up just pushing the AK slightly beyond with what I can get away with, and missing a lot. Yes, I know this is a hardware solution to a training problem, but I'm not an AK guy, and as much as I'm shooting the AK now, a vast majority of my current and future training will be on the AR. So I'd rather just make my AK perform closer to what the AR is like, instead of just learning the AK outright. Yeah, yeah, I know, sue me, but I'm gonna take the hit on the reasons why I don't like a muzzle break in order to get my AK to perform like an AR. I don't know, you probably get the point. Wow, that was kind of a ranty video. Anyway, hopefully you guys are doing all right in this mess that is this COVID outbreak. Honestly, it's a good time to dry fire and if you have the ability to get out and shoot. Anyways, this was some brass facts for you. Have a nice day.